Hey everybody, um, how's everybody going today? Uh, this is the next day after uh, working on the uh, Delmonico uh, FMB 749. Um, got ahead of myself a little bit. It is on the bench working. Um, I decided uh, it's dry enough. Got impatient, didn't want to wake a week. Seems to be working. I've got it on AM now. It was tight dead on AM. I went ahead and did a partial alignment. Uh, sorry about that. The FM seems to work. There seems to be a little bit of hum now. I still have it running on. Uh, I still have it running on uh, uh, dim bulb. Uh, Put a little bit of current, but it's not the power supply, it's just the tubes. This thing has got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 tubes. 11 tubes in this thing. So it's going to use a little bit of current. Uh, I have it running on AM now. Tells me, hey, you just came back home. This is us when I'm home because technology is running the world. Just let it run it says, so it can uh, finish drying out. Wash your hands if I don't think the uh, output transformers will be damaged by this. On your wash can actually hear when the water's running. The AM alignment. There was actually turned out to be two coil, two IF transformers for the 455. It's, uh, that's the IF for the uh, that's the IF for AM, and then. Uh, the FM has a few more coils. Now, I still, I was just started playing with the alignment, just looking at it, evaluating it, had to clean some controls, clean the uh, function switch, and uh, things like that. And uh, some of the stuff I've noticed is the uh, is the little neon indicators are not working, that I can tell. Um, I think there's a pilot light on one, and. Uh, I hadn't looked into the other circuit yet, but it is working. Um, Some truly believe that this is all about control. This is all about AM doesn't seem to be especially hot. Um, at the most uh, microscopic. I put my finger on the uh, that's part of it. Antenna loop. That's part of it is these people don't have the ferrite loop. Control, ferrite they don't uh, get to be ferrite antenna in the room. Yeah. I can and stuff. when they Take my finger off. I can still hear it, but it's very small. So the 12 be 6 in this thing, um, which is the AM oscillator mixer, uh, the it's kind of its own circuit. Basically, it's just out there. It's a very rudimentary. It looks to me like a very rudimentary single conversion um, receiver uh, for AM. Uh, basically, it has a little tune coil. 455 uh, kilohertz coil uh, that's uh, to, hooked to the plate of the 12BE6 uh, and then the a little ferrite loop is tied to the uh, to the grid and across the variable tuning cap uh, what I basically did is took a 455 kilohertz uh, signal from my signal generator and uh, applied it to the grid of the uh, 12BE6 uh, capacitive coupled, of course, and I was able to align the 455 stage. It did have some. It did need a little bit of help, so it made it a lot more sensitive. But still, it ain't quite there yet. Uh, so, um, with that being said, I had to go away. And I just let this thing operate on the bench. Uh, so, with that prologue. Um, we had some new furniture got delivered this morning so I had to go tend to that uh, so got all that done what I want to do is I want to look back at the print again and I want to get a little closer look at this AM circuit because uh, I found the antenna tuning uh, the end the uh, ferrite antenna tuning uh, adjustment on the uh, on the tuning gang uh, which is kind of straightforward. Basically, you're matching the the ferrite core and I mean the ferrite rod antenna to the radio. Use it to the with the uh, matching adjustment, which is on the tuning gang. Uh, that's peaking it, 
Uh, I don't remember. I got. I don't remember if you're supposed to tune it from the low band or the high band. But anyway, I'll get that figured out. Uh, but I think there's another adjustment in here, and I got to look at the schematic in here in a second. For you know, you got to be able to tell the oscillator where it's at to get it to track properly. So that's my next step. So let me get the book. There seems to be a little bit of a hum in this thing. Um, sound like 60 cycle hum. I have a I have a nasty idea where that is. What that is. Uh, let me find my glasses so I can see. As y'all may or may not know, I need a little help. But on the uh, schematic, the tuning gain put coordinate to this. Yes. I uh, don't know if you guys can see this, how well you can. That is mighty dark. Let's just run over to the uh, computer and I'll show you how this works. I'm just going to go gorilla style here. Let's go gorilla style. Yeah, that'll be a little better. Let's just zoom me in a little bit. This is the uh, this is the AEM detector oscillator right here. This little dude right here. It's called an AM converter. Let's wide that out. So here's the 12 B E6. Here's the plate, of course. Here's the screen grid. Uh, here is the control grid right here. It's a little like a Hartley or no, I'm sorry, Colpitt's oscillator because it's uh, this is the tuned circuit right here. This is the oscillator section right here. And this adjustment, this capacitor right here, you'll notice the arrow with the dashed line to here. This is the gain capacitor. So when you tune your uh, you tune your radio, this capacitor changes the uh, parallel resonance of this. Uh, this is the uh, ferrite antenna, by the way. And this right here is a, another little coil yet to be determined. But anyway, it changes, uh, it tracks. That's this adjusts for uh, the tune, what frequency you're trying to listen to. And this right here tunes, uh, does the same thing kind of, and it adjusts the local oscillator to where it tracks. In other words, if you're tuned to 540 kilohertz, this thing uh, uh, is, uh, generates a signal 455 kilohertz lower than, uh, I'm sorry, higher than what you're receiving to give you 455 kilohertz IF. But anyway, this tunes uh, to your uh, to your mixer frequency here, and it tracks what frequency this thing here is uh, picking up. So, as you tune the dial across the band, this thing keeps this variable capacitor keeps uh, keeps this uh, tuned circuit tuned for whatever frequency you're trying to pick up. Anyhow, uh, what we're looking for is this capacitor here is on uh, is, is a little screw a uh, little little small uh, micro capacitor variable cap on top of the tuning coil. That is how you adjust your range of this right here. Now, right here, another capacitor. This is the next one I'm looking for. This one right here is what adjust when you're. Uh, in other words, if your dial is pointed on 600, then you won't you adjust this right here this con this little capacitor here which is in parallel with this one you adjust that capacitor right there to where this oscillator will uh, track to 600 so that's how you can calibrate it to your dial and you've got some interaction between your dial and all that basically since I don't have any service information on this I've got to probably put this thing in the case to see and adjust the dial to 600 and try not to turn it and so I can go in here and calibrate this to make sure that it matches what's on the dial. Anyway, it's a simple little oscillator. Uh, let's see here. Let me change hands. Anyway, this right here is your, it's called the AM converter. And if you follow these two lines right here up, 
is that air conditioner. I've been listening to this video, watching my videos, and that air conditioner is quite a little noisy. Anyway, uh, here is uh, your band switch, if you will. Uh, this is B plus right here. That you, when you select FM, it cuts power off or B plus to the AM stage and applies it to the FM stage and vice versa. Anyway, you place it on AM, it applies B plus, which is about 95 volts, about 100 volts or so, uh, to this AM IFT. This is your first AM IF transformer. Anyway, B plus goes here, comes down this line here to the screen grid of the 12BE6. Uh, also, then this B plus also goes through uh, tr the primary of the IF transformer. Uh, comes out, goes down, back to let me get it here goes all the way back down to the plate so so that tube there generates uh, the the uh, mixer for the the product the mixer product at 455 so you are, are just this primary for peak at 455 kilohertz and then this right here is the secondary and you tune it for 455 kilohertz you basically are just peaking for a peak uh, indication on your output which I use a scope across the uh, speaker leads so anyway here is the uh, FM uh, intermediate frequency transformer uh, anyway 455 injected into the grid of this 12 uh, BA6 uh, comes out the primary I mean out the plate and it comes into the uh, Let's see the primary. I'm sorry, yeah, the primary. This is the tuning coil for AM right here, I believe. So you peak this one. So you peak this one. Let's see, you peak the primary of this transformer, secondary of this transformer, and then the then you peak this coil right here, and that's all you got. That is your only peaking for AM. So now that we kind of have an idea what we're looking for. I'm going to go back down to this guy here and see if I can uh, find find that capacitor. So I know where this one is. I got to find this capacitor and then I got to see how I can align that a little more proper. Anyway, let's go back to the radio. Let's see where y'all at again. All right, so all that being said, let me go rogue back on this thing again. Let's go gorilla back again so we can kind of have a little closer look at what we're looking at so y'all can see what I'm seeing. Ooh, let's zoom you out. Okay, so there's the uh, here's the 12 be6 and um, here is the 12 be the uh, first IFT uh, right here 455 kilohertz that's strictly for AM and here's the second one right here and you only tune the top I believe it's the AM side so you tune the bottom top for peak and then you tune this one for peak out uh, peak signal and that's it but anyway right there it's another adjustment I think that's going to be the other adjustment that we're looking for because this is the tuning gang here this is the uh, antenna trimming coil right there uh, and I'm fairly sure that's FM side right there so this is the AM side this is the FM side now with that being said I'm not sure about this. I got to look at it again, but there's an. This is a adjustable coil, which this is that right there. If you can see it. Hang on a second. I want to call this the shaky cam channel. Let me get my chunking. Anyway, that coil right there is the AM oscillator coil. So that's an adjustment for it right there but down here is that no-no capacitor that I told you guys about 
I don't really want to fool with that. I'm leaving that alone. That doesn't appear to be something that I want to play with. And that may that may not even have anything to do, and I'm fairly sure that don't have anything to do with AM. So we're going to go back here and see if we can, uh, I'm going to close you down for a minute. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try to figure out where the frequency is on this dial here. See if I can track that in. So I'll bring you back. All right. Um, what I think I'm going to do, guys, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, Take my signal generator right here. I'm just going to kind of loop it over there and I'm going to get me a clip lead. And I'm going to make me a little loop. Very crude, crudimentary loop. Okay. I'm just going to take, connect it to my. Uh, signal generator output, okay? No biggie. I'm just going to put it around the loop of the AM loop right there. Now I'm going to generate uh, probably let's generate 1000 hertz. 1000, oh, 1 megahertz. Uh, let's see, I need to put that on high minute. I need to be on band C. I'm just adjusting my signal generator using my. I want to see. There we go. Level down. What I want to do is I'm going to. I'm generating one megahertz or thousand kilohertz. And we'll see if I can find it on the dial here. Turn the volume up. Closer here, oh, or maybe further back. Not quite comfortable with that. So now that I got that, I have my signal generators generating one megahertz or a thousand kilohertz. I have it loosely coupled into my antenna coil, so I'm not physically touching anything. Uh, tuned it to a thousand. What I want to do is I want to take and adjust this uh, adjustment right here. That's right above the little coil. That the oscillator, the AM oscillator call, and I'm going to see what happens. So here we go. Hear that? That is definitely changing the frequency of that. So now I know what that adjustment is. Because nothing's marked on this schematic. Or as far as, you know, alignment instructions. So, I need to figure out where on this dial is a thousand megahertz so I can adjust that so I'm going to shut you down a minute I'm going to come up with a way to uh, calibrate this dial and I'll get right back with you alright um, let me back up a little bit what I just did or in the process of doing go rogue again I put the radio, just connected it from the test stand and everything, and I put the radio back in the cabinet and I fastened two screws, put the uh, dial string indicator back where it belongs, and now what we're going to do is, we're dropping it, Ugh. turn it around, and I'm going to find the tuning. And it is off. I got to adjust. I got to center this. I got to center the radio in the cabinet. Otherwise, it's going to be off. So give me just a second. We'll turn this around. I can't see what I'm doing. Oh yeah, this is so much fun. 
Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up the two screws underneath. This all makes sense. I'm just trying to center the radio, the uh, knobs where it will affect the dial position. So I'm just going to. Uh, can't see it. Just centering the dial. I'm centering. I'm centering this knob and all these shafts as close to the center of all the shafts at the center of these holes. That way it will be completely straight. As straight as we can get it because we want that dial string to be completely accurate. And I will mark this for the FM too because we're going to have to do the FM alignment too. Now, now that we got that, now that we got that, come back here. This cabinet's gonna need some love, but now, as you can see, the shafts are centered to the holes. Now we can tune. Uh, here's AM. Look at there. wasn't too far from. wasn't too far off. So let's see, ninety. I guess that's 110, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, 115, that ain't right. 90, 95. Now, how does that work? 90, 95, 100, 105, 110. Yeah, that's it. This is a uh, five kilohertz steps. So 90, 95, 100, 105, Basically, this should be right there, but that's 90, 95, 100. So, 100 is going to be right in there. So, we'll just mark that right there. So, that's 100 AM, the FM band is going to be, let's see, 100, uh, 100, 105. Well, that's going to be 100. 101 yeah 100 101 so it's gonna be about 101 so it's gonna be a hundred there we'll just call it a hundred right in between it and 101 that's how we'll tune this thing sound like a winner to me so let me mark that a hundred And what I'll do is turn this radio around. I'll take my little old Sharpie. And I'll come in here and I'll make a mark. See, I forgot what it was on FM. 101 FM. Okay. Now, let me show you if you can see what I did. This makes it easy to go in. get some light in there. There we go. Where's my Chinese pointer? This is the uh, dial indicator right here, or the pointer. And I just put a mark beside it here and here. And I just wrote down there 1000 AM 101 FM. Now I know when I'm adjusting these, uh, uh, lining this radio, I know where my frequency is on the dial. That way when I put all this back together, I don't have to worry about where it's at. Lickety split. 
and all that stuff. Now that I got that information, we take it back out and turn it back around. Take it back out of the chassis. This chassis needs some work too inside. It's nasty. You got spider webs and everything else around it. Still ain't figured out how what I'm gonna do with that. Uh, whoop, I'm gonna tear this up. You gotta always remember this boys and girls. Pull your pull your pointer out before you come out. Take that however you want to. Now that I know what that is, I'll put my test jig. Let me show you this test jig I made, if y'all can see. This is my little stand that I made to hold that radio upright. So basically, uh, let's see. Put the radio in it sideways like this right here. The uh, little uh, the little neon is right here. I just pushed it up against. So I left room for the neon to not be damaged or in a bind or whatever. Take a C clamp, and I'll show you this in just a minute. Take that C clamp, tighten this up right, Whoop. and we're fine. Let's see. Yeah. Let me improvise. Use the C clamp, clamped it right here, nothing in the way, nothing bothering nothing. I can go back and forth with it, do what I want to do, not be uh, not to worry about it falling over, which is what it did earlier. Scared me to death. Thought I'd tore it up. Alright. Where were we? Oh yeah. I'm lining. Alright hook our outputs back up I have a couple speakers mounted on my bench for the left and right for working on this kind of stuff just a couple little short speaker cables going over to a little jack field I got right there um, Really nothing to it. This is my little FM loop. You can see it. Just hook into the FM terminals. It's just a little clip lead. Okay, I'm gonna put a knob back. I have a feeling the way this thing is acting that my I've got a little bit of leakage. Might be a little bit of moisture in here still. I may have uh, the way it's acting. Uh, hard to explain. Hey, hey, you know? Anyway, let's get our test going back here. I'm monitoring the audio channel. Let me see. Ready to go again. Hang on a second. We don't need that, Noah. Can you put that on? everything done I gotta stop okay I'm back got everything put back together so what we're where we stopped at was we know where 1,000 or 1,000 kilohertz or 1 megahertz is on the dial now I've got it I've got the pointer uh, I got the dial pointer in the calibration mark that I made remember I put this thing in the case turn this and got it Got the uh, shaft centered in the uh, holes that they go through in the case. Okay, I think that ought to be self-explanatory. That way, and then I tuned the dial to a mark that was uh, kind of easy to figure out on the dial scale on the front of the cha uh, the front of the cabinet. Once I got all that done, then I made a mark with a sharpie on the back side of this slider, right? The sliding uh, dial pointer right here. Now I know where 1,000 is on this. Now that I know where 1000 is, I can pull it back out of the case and I went ahead and marked FM too because this point represents 101 FM and 1000 kilohertz AM. So now I know where 
my alignment point, my reference is. That way when you get done with this thing, put it all back in the case, it'll be right. Anyway, where I'm at now is I've got everything turned on, warmed up. We've got some signal generator uh, generating 1,000 hertz. So now we want to find 1,000 hertz and tune the local oscillator frequency till we hear a tone. There's a the tone. Now we peak it, which it is peaked. We can go back over here to the antenna. scope on the output you can't see it from here of course but I bet you can if I turn you around let me turn that volume down because that's really loud on my hearing let's turn you around here you can see what the blazes are going on I have to keep my camera plugged in because the battery is apparently defective or old, I don't know, this camera's several years old. I'm trying to figure out how we can do this. All right, there's going to be a trade-off here. I know you guys want to see the adjustment, but basically, I'm just tuning the, uh, the uh, IF stages. So just looking at the oscilloscope right there, should be able to see it. I'm just going to use it as a tuning indicator. I'm just going to adjust it for maximum signal. Okay, got that one done. Let me get in y'all's way for just a second. I'm going to do it again. Yeah, I said it was. Hang on. Ooh, I did just the wrong thing. Yeah. That wouldn't be nice. Oh, this thing is a pain to find. There, got it. Here we go. So that one's peaked. So those two are peaked. So let's come over here to the AB, the other. And I think we have to adjust that uh, other trimmer. I think we have to adjust that other trimmer for the FM side. I really think so. Ah, oh, what the hell. Now look at there. Didn't anticipate that, did I? Be nice if I actually had a decent screwdriver. Pardon me, let me get my Klein. Klein seems to do the best job. Here we go. So 
So let's take away that. Turn the volume up a little. See what we can hear. The the medical team is bureaucrats and figures of authority, and they want to maintain their symbol of authority. So they're going to keep pushing these things and try to keep scaring us. That's about right. Is not really going to be very effective on airlines. We we multiple uh, airline CEOs actually come out and say, honestly, with the way the air is filtered and everything on the plane, your chances of catching on the plane are, are pretty slim because of the filtration system and everything like that. But it's just another sign of they want to display. Now I, I want to say this. This came this morning. Uh, he's a, he's a uh, school choice advocate. Um, I, I'll follow him. He follows me. He he, he gives great information. Just is not very sensitive. It just is lacking sensitivity. Advertiser. Um, Lafayette. I have to put my hand on this call to even get it to do anything. Now look at St. Landry Parish School System. They saw some scores drop because they decided at the last minute to go virtual for the first part of the year. Places across. So, um, I mean, it is dead as a doorknob. Have the infrastructure go virtual in an emergency. But that's a plan C type. It should be more sensitive than that. Virtual education as the primary plan does not work. Uh, I'm going to throw another B6 in there if I can find one. If I uh, can't find one, we'll test a tube. Or if I do find a B6, I'll change the B6. We'll see how well it works then. Uh, it's possible it's a 12BA6. But uh, I don't know. I'm going to get another BE6 put in there. It could be a week tube. Okay. Um, <laughs> I looked at my tube caddy and I've got tons of BE6s and BA6s. So there's a 12 BE6. So basically, I am going to change the uh, detector oscillator to something I'm not sure if it's even any better. But let's do it anyway. What the heck? 12 BA BE6 Baker Echo 6. Just gonna put another tube in and let's see if that makes it any more any more sensitive. I hate to change out a genuine original tube. Here we go. Of course, depending on the tube characteristics and everything, this alignment may be way off again. actually hear something. Kids do not carry the virus on me. Well, that's a little better. I wonder if we want to do another. The 455 zone. See, it will pick up now. Didn't pick up anything before, so that, uh, 
I think we ought to move forward and change a couple of BA6s. Let's change V4, which is this middle BA6. That's the next IF tube in line. I don't remember if I tested these tubes before or not. We'll put a BA6 in there. See what happens. This thing ought to be a little bit more sensitive than this. Put my finger on that tuning coil just so I can hear something. Not really right. Not tuning coil, but the AM coil. And I'm not. Let's see what happens. Iron, fire in a hole. May have to realign to 455 again. Some of the size of these 12 BA6s in here had dark spots on them. Now, one thing I, we've got to remember though, we're not 100% line voltage. So I'll tell you what, let's bypass, let's, let's get away from the bypass. Let's go directly in and give it some real power. Fairly sure ain't nothing going to blow up. Look at there. Maybe I should have done that first. Of the virus and pushing for vaccines, that's made the pendulum swing the other way along among some of the right, and be extremely hesitant to the point of fear of the vaccine. I wonder if we want to go ahead and. It's, it's, it's not data that's being pushed. Let's go back to our calibration point. Sound like it's off frequency, which okay, whatever.
if uh, my frequency again. Way off the frequency. I don't know how that happened. if we can hear anything. Your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why Ford Auto can post a job quality candidate with first day. ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter. I just wonder if that loop's open. I just wonder if that loops open. Very possible. Well, let's find out. You're getting a negative voltage on it. I think that loops open. Loop is grounded. An isolated ground. Where does it go? There it is. I'm going to power it down for a second. Just going to take an old meter and put it across the loop. Make sure that loop ain't open. on ohms and I'm just going to measure should be no shorts there alright my loop appears to be good so I guess that theory is out Seems like it should be more sensitive than that. So we have the oscillator aligned while well, I believe it tracks. Uh, have the IF stages aligned. Hello, Showers and thunderstorms will increase today as an upper level disturbance moves across. Much colder air is expected this upcoming weekend. Today, cloudy, it's a chance for showers and thunderstorms. We'll have a high of 80. Tonight, cloudy, a 40% chance for showers and thunderstorms. Low 61. Let Arnie and his staff at Air Service Professionals keep you cool.
All Air Pros at 387-1978. I, for one, don't want to keep these tubes in there. So let's go ahead and put the uh, 12BA6 back in. I didn't see any appreciable change in alignment when we change that tube. So I think we can put it back without having to do this again. This thing ought to be more sensitive than that. Then again, my uh, radio was pointing in the wrong direction. As you know, with a uh, with a ferrite rod antenna, polarization is everything. So, okay. Let's see what happens. Tube really kind of warm. Waiting. But uh, I had a, you folks, if you ever eat a really good wagyu, I mean, my gosh, this place had a wagyu beef of the ribeye, so good. You didn't even, it was so filling, even at 12 ounce, I eat like a slob. So I usually eat like a 20 ounce plus. <laughs> I think that one is a little it just doesn't act that good does it let's find us a reference I'll put my loop antenna back around that Tune for a thousand megahertz. A thousand megahertz. Go and tune for a uh, one kilohertz uh, or one thousand kilohertz. Go back to BNC. We're gonna go to thousand hertz. I gotta adjust. do, put the loop back on there and I'm going to tune this back to our reference. And I want to check these tubes in line. Wow. A little off. Yeah, it is. I'm not going to mess with it. 
if you want for me uh, the balls, you know, in New York, do you have the balls, you know, the clown? <laughs> The mayor of New York City is leaving soon. Man's a full ball. He's the guy in the Rocky IV movie up in the Polar Pier who watching Drago get his butt kicked in the later rounds by Rocky. That's the Blasio. What do you think? He's up there right next to the actor who looks like Gorbachev. So the Blasio <clears throat> has decided it would be a good idea to institute a vaccine mandate, which you know I find repulsive, especially with the company I'm with now, Cumulus, even more repulsive. And uh, I'm continuing that fight here. He decided to institute a vaccine mandate for private companies in New York. Freedom and liberty. It's such a toxic cancer to humankind. Then you want Ron DeSantis to go and implement this conservative vision, right, Jim? Wouldn't it make sense? Watch Florida collapse, and then say, as the mayor of New York City, <laughs> okay. the he'll say, hey, Floridians, look, conservatism Something doesn't up. work. You all are miserable down there. Look at this utopia we have in New York City. Come here and live in my communist Hate Ron DeSantis and hate Greg Abbott. Why is that? <clears throat> Well, the answer should be obvious. It's because they know what they're saying is BS. Conservatism is the path forward to economic, health care, educational prosperity going forward. They know that. And we won't polish you, and this whole forward. section probably won't get deleted until I figure yeah, out what the hell is going on. When you put it okay. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to leave any of the last segment in there or not. But it took me a little figuring out how this thing worked. Um, needless to say, it's good as it's going to get. Um, I had to play around with the oscillator slug, the uh, limelight and also the uh, trimmer cap. And I finally found where I think it's right. Um, I had to do another IF alignment. Put all the original tubes back in. Uh, it's so much electrical noise in this building in this local area that it's almost impossible to listen to FM, AM radio in this building. These fluorescent lights that I have, I have to turn them off. They are the most noisy lights I've ever seen in my life. If I can find a magnetic ballast, I'm going to change all these lights out to magnetic ballast. Uh, it's ridiculous to work on anything AM in this building. Anyway, I don't know where that's coming from. It's a Mexican, it's Latin music or Mexican music, as I call it. I don't know where that's coming from. But it seems to be a lot more sensitive. Shape the future. Teach. Learn and receive free support at teach.org. The Mountain Man shows somebody had a problem getting off the plane. Anyway, it works. No, it should be accurate. Uh, supposed to get up Don't know. Here. On the way to the. Uh, it is at 1,000 hertz. 1,000 uh, kilohertz. But there's a stuff there. It was Willie's daughter. Say, do you recognize me? But I did find that the uh, tuning. Uh, arrangement is starting to slip now. I don't know exactly why. Uh, I did figure out last night while well, thinking about this that uh, on the grommet situation, uh, the grommet situation that we had and the uh, spring hitting the screw of the tuning, uh, the, uh, the pulley on the tuner, where it was hanging, I did figure out that that tuner needs to be lifted again. It's too low. That's why it's the two are intersecting. It shouldn't do that. It took me a little while to figure that out. So I'm going to just put another, turn this thing off. 
go ahead and put some more grommets on it and either jack it up a little bit more and see if that helps. Um, then I'm going to turn my attention to it seems to have some home in it. Wednesdays at 5.06 here on News Talk 105.7. But I think that was just pain of interference. I still haven't changed a safety cap out of that, that, that in here, so that I'll have to do that too. And then I haven't even attacked the FM side. So anyway, that's enough for now. Uh, this may be another part. I may delete this whole thing because I was trying to scratch in my head too much. Uh, We'll see. I'm going to play with this thing a while longer and see what we can do. So, bye. Alright, here we are again. I have the AM working satisfactorily. Uh, now we're working on a stereo issue. Uh, Still got the tuner I got to work on, but uh, the, the uh, stereo is not decoding properly. And my lights in this building are horrible. But if you can see, you can see the scope right here. That is left and right audio, demodulated. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? This is AM. This is the uh, left and right audio. I just have them running on the same line of the scope. So this is what AM looks like. This is FM. Not just FM mono. See the audio. The audio is the same, so if I uh, ground, see the audio is the same. So that's good. I'm getting the same amount of audio left and right channel. Now look what happens when I go to multiplex or FM stereo. I have one channel that's. Uh, working, the other one is not. How about that? So, um, issue in the multiplex circuit. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up another scope. Let that be my monitor. I'm going to set up another scope and I'm going to trace these signals through this multiplex circuit. So let me get set up. Okay, I'm going to have to turn the uh, volume down so I don't get a copyright strike YouTube. Basically all I'm going to do is, without me going in here turning adjustments and mess like this, uh, you'll notice uh, on this monitor here is the left and right audio come from the decoder and then on this scope here is going to be our signal tracing scope so we're going to just see where the buck stops uh, let's see if I can get this out here so appears to be our left channel that's working and our right channel is not. If you can see this, okay, I apologize guy. Here is the, uh, what is that, 17 EW8 tube. This is, uh, this is the little, I guess the uh, amplifiers that come from the separation control. There's a 10,000 ohm pot here and then here's two grids and then the uh, detector uh, that 
that takes the uh, carrier and it does all the multi demultiplexing of the stereo. But I'm just going to look at the carrier of the signals here and see if we even get anything out of here. All I got to do is find out where these things are. Uh, and I do not know the 17 EW8s enough to know what the grids, cathodes, and all that stuff is. So, I guess, uh, let me get that information. I'll be right back. Alright. I think I got it. I just got to find these tubes. Uh, what I'm going to look for is the grids of V10. Where is my little Chinese pointer? This is the um, this is uh, two little uh, I'm going to call them buffer amplifiers because that's really all they're doing is they're taking the low signal from the detected uh, audio and they're amplifying it enough to send it to the volume control basically so it's these two tubes here I'm just gonna go to the grids of the 17 EW's 8 I just gotta find V10 on the uh, schematic here on the V10 50 C5 so it's gonna be like that so V10 is going to be this tube here, I think. Yeah, V10 right there. I know you can't see it, but trust me. Alright. I'm going to go to times 10, and I'm just going to look for signal. All I'm doing is I'm looking for signal. So I want to look at pins 1 and 6 of these tubes. So, let's see here. Nothing on pin one, two, three, four, five. If you can see it, there's signal on six. Nothing on one. That's the grids. I'm sorry, that's the plates. So I guess the next thing to do, I'm gonna measure plate voltage there plate voltage is about 62 volts on that one two three four, five. and about 62 on that one so I have plate voltage and I do not have drive on one side so which one was it didn't have it so pin one so we'll go over to pin 3, which is the signal. Three and seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, anyway, pin 7 seems to have some kind of audio there. Going back over to 3. I'm seeing the same audio on 3. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm looking like I have the same amount of drive on both. Back to pins. Can't even read my own writing. That's horrible. Pin one and six are the plates. One. That's nothing. Two, three, four, five. 
I seem to have dry. YouTube probably already getting me now. I don't really see a whole lot of see a whole lot of stuff to get excited about on that right there. I want to look at the cathodes with the voltmeter. Get an idea of what's going on here. So I think that's pin two. Can't read this crap. Three and eight. So I have about um, about seventeen volts on that one. At about the same on this. These tubes appear to be going to be drawing about the same amount of current. Um, that's kind of inconclusive. Really seeing what I want to see here. Six. So I'm just going to look at the signal throughput if I can. Right there, pin one. That's the plate of one of these. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pin one is a plate of a 17 EW8 19KC amplifier. So
pin two, a lot more signal coming in on pin two, coming in from the 19kc amplifier, if this is what the hell this is, doesn't tell me, doesn't tell me if it's, uh, doesn't give me any pin numbers. How having documentation. Let me figure this out. Oh, this is insane. Got a schematic, which ain't a whole hell of a lot of help. It is a little bit of help, so now I know what the hell I'm looking for. Anyway, there's a 17 EW8 where the multiplex come the uh, comes from the detector. Uh, so it comes in on pin two. The multiplex does. From the detector, and I seem to have, uh, let's see, 20, see, that'd be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, so that'd be 120. Let's see. I am looking at the wrong thing here. I uh, forgot where I was at now, too. Then got used to. All right, we're 50 millivolts per division. So that's 50 millivolts per division. I'm getting 50, 100 millivolts, 100 times 10 times 100. So, according to this, a volt. Okay, well, whatever. So I got a volt there coming in on two. So the output's coming on one. I don't seem to have. Uh, seem to have any 19 coming out. Let's see what's on three. Three supposedly. Nineteen, yeah I should have nineteen. I should have pilot coming out of this tube. I don't. I don't have anything coming out of this tube. Also have to figure out how this stuff works. It's not conventional to me. Anyway, if you can see it, this tube right here, that's horrible light. Yeah, by George, you can see it. Anyway, this the, the multiplex comes in wherever this is from here. This is from the ratio detector of the, the set comes in through this tube here, comes out of this tube through this transformer uh, into the second transformer. This is 19, uh, 19 kilohertz amplifier. So if it's supposed to amplify 19 kilohertz, it's not doing it. Uh, anyway, if it was amplifying it, it would send it through this, this, uh, this transformer, go through these two diodes, which would in fact multiply the 19, so that would make it 38 kilohertz. So that tube there amplifies the multiplied by two 19 kilohertz and sends it to this transformer, which sends it to the detector. So this right here, uh, I need to check voltages on this. This tube could possibly be bad. So anyway, that's what we're about to do next. Hold it. Hang on. Yeah. Calm down, boy. I had to get rid of this, this noise. I just hope this YouTube ain't picking this noise up because I would be in so much trouble. Okay, let's check uh, let's check voltages on these tubes. Uh, find my meter probe. Let's go back up here and let's check uh, Chuck. Let's look at uh, voltage on PN1. Oh, I uh, peg the scale. Uh, I got about 90 volts. I got about 90 volts on that dude. 
Uh, let's see. Go to pin six. Two, three, four, five. Six. Still have about ninety. It'll be a appreciable voltage drop across that. Let's go to pin three, which is the cathode of uh, one of these tubes. So you can have a little bit of voltage here. I'm getting about 11 volts on the cathode of that dude. Let's go over here to pin 8. It should be pin 8 there. There's not a whole lot. Doesn't appear to be drawing that much uh, current, so I don't know. Seems warm, like it's doing something. So let's look at that signal one more time with the scope. Hand two. This is where the multiplex comes in. I'm times 10, I'm 50, 100, 100 times 10 is 1,000. So it's 1,000, that'd be 1 volt. So 50, 100, tell me 1 volt. I'm making sure, guys. Alright, let's go to pin 1, which supposedly is the plate. The plate has less signal coming out of it. So, nine, eight, seven, six. Yeah, I mean, this tube appears to be dead. I'm fairly certain I don't have a 17 EW8. So, What I'm going to do, just for grins and wiggles, I'm going to swap it with this tube. They're supposedly the same tube, I'm just swapping them to see if it makes any difference. Alright, power the radio back up. Alright, there comes my signal, the input signal. So we get about the same thing. So, um, I don't know. Um, sure. Really would have expected yeah, about 90 on that, one, two, three, four, five, six on rechecking these plates. Tended, tended, uh, I'm tempted to play with those alignment, and I don't want to touch that alignment. Supposed to be a 19 kilocycle amplifier. I ain't seeing an amplifier. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to take and uh, add my own 19 kilohertz 
and uh, see if the circuit amplifies in and that'll tell me if I've got a that'll tell me if I've got a stage that's not doing what it should so power's turned off I'm going to try to locate that capacitor isolate it and put my own signal in there and see what happens I just have to find that capacitor so I'm coming off of pin 2 of this tube I'm just going to switch them yeah. Let's see here. All right, I'm just gonna get a capacitor, capacitor, capacitator, whatever floats your boat, condenser. There's a 0.04 microfarad. Hey, I'm looking at these, uh, actually I ought to call these polyesters, I was calling them nylon, but the little silver ones. Man, I tell you, we just had so many problems with those and I work at the Zenith TV shop. That's it right there. Yep. It's coming from here. Yellow wire. Yeah, yellow wire comes from there. Sure. And of course, that is one hard to get to little son of a gun. I think I can pull that off. Get my. Get in here on my soldering iron. Now. Let me get set up for the next phase of this operation. We can do 19 kilohertz. Not on this one. Ooh I'm going to have to do something different. Well, this is a audio issue, so Back you up. Of course, got the power cable dangling, knocking every daggum thing loose. I don't have a FM test set. It's come in really handy right about now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my handy dandy little uh, oscillator here. This would we'll send that signal out to this. Let me adjust my time base. There we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to inject 19 kilohertz. This ain't working. There we go. You're like, what? We're going to inject 19 kilohertz directly into that tube with a pure sine wave. Well, right now I'm just calibrating the uh, 
audio generator. Okay. Uh, now that I know that it's 19, I'll take my little clip lead here. I mean my little test lead. I'm gonna run this thing. I don't know. We'll just run it my, my 70. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna inject it straight into that capacitor and. Boy, this is, this is going to be fun. No, I'm going to get into all this mess. Alright, let me see if I can show you what the hell I'm doing. This multiplex end right here comes from the uh, FM detect, the ratio detector of the receiver comes in through this capacitor right here which is an 05 which is I just disconnected this lead from that capacitor now I'm taking my audio signal generator which is calibrated for 19 kilohertz and I'm injecting it right here so now I can get 19 kilohertz exactly on here and I can see the behavior of the circuit uh, I want to see this amplify because it wasn't amplifying and it may be doing something I'm not seeing, but it says it's a 19 kilohertz trap uh, right here, which I I don't know. I'm not up on my theory on this particular receiver. But we're about to find out how this works. So let's get you back over here, get y'all set up. I have to keep my camera on charge, which is a pain in the butt. Got to get some new batteries for it. I even just like to keep doing this mess. Anyway, I'm running it. Uh, all right, got that going. Uh, let me set my calibration to about. Fire in a hole, I think. Maybe that's the wrong word. Nineteen kilohertz, right there. Now, yeah. look at my scope. Completely, 100% out of 180 degrees out of phase with each other. But look there, it is working. Oh, that's interesting. I'm looking at the signal on the O scope, secondary O scope here. Grid, it is amplifying. Wasn't getting that a minute ago. Let's come over to pin seven. signal there. That's six. Yeah, I think that circuit's working. So that means we have a uh, ratio detector issue. Um, it's not recovering the audio properly. Which means I gotta stop y'all again so I can see what to do next. Okay, we'll come back over here to the computer, and of course I closed it. Hello, computer. Come over to radio, TV, manuals, blah blah blah. Down Monaco. Bring up the schematic again, if you want to call it that. So this is where we're at now. This is the. Uh, This is where the circuit that we were just looking at right here. And what I did is this multiplex input right here is coming from the ratio detector right here, the discriminator, the FM detector. Uh, let's see. I disconnected this. I put in an audio signal generator right here at 19 kilohertz. 
and I checked this stage and this stage had plenty of gain. However, when it was connected to the radio, it did not have, or connect this was connected to it, it did not have any signal hardly going through it, which told me something was off frequency. Uh, this seems to peak through 19 kilohertz. Uh, as I shifted it below and above the frequency, I could see it peak and, you know, it peaked at nine kilo, 19 kilohertz. So I'm thinking this stage is probably good. So let's go up here. Uh, let's see. The FM detector. This dude right here. So what all do we have? AFC. AFC is driven from this signal right here and uh, this is an FM ratio detector so I can use this frequent this right here to align uh, in other words if I put 10.7 in here this everything being right that should be zero uh, in other words a voltage swing in other words if I put 10.7 in here 10.7 megahertz if I feed it into this right here and I put my VTBM set for a zero scale, a zero center scale, I should be able to shift this in frequency up and down and get a shift of this to tell me if this is right. So I think I'm going to tune this old school style and see if that works. So let me mess around with this a little bit more and I'll bring you back. Boy, it died, it died. All right. Um, Um, what I'm about to do, I'm going to clean my bench off a little bit, reorganize, and I'm going to fix it up to where I can measure. The, I'm going to do a rudimentary bandpass test of this uh, of this 10.7. Uh, I'm going to put 10.7 in here basically and I'm going to look at the output detector voltage and see if it's zero or not. And then I'm going to go from there. I have a feeling that uh, this thing is way out of alignment. So bring it back. Alright. I have 10.7 going into this uh, receiver in the front of the IF stage and it is um, behaving as bad as radically as I figured it would. seems to be off frequency. Well, so if you see this voltmeter, I have it zeroed. These VTVMs, you can set the zero. This is used for doing discriminator calls. And that's what this yellow wire is right here that we pulled loose a while ago. So I'm showing it to be off. If I'm doing this right. I need to get on this converter right here. The grid. transformer output of that transformer can't just pull the two which is what I'd like to do
best way to do this is sweep it, but I don't really want to sweep it. I think this is the ratio detector. I'm 100% sure. I thought that was a ratio detector, but apparently not. I guess I'm going to go over here to see this one here. See if I can tune it. Zero reading. Yeah, hell, it's already broke. Break it a little more again. Find the alignment tool. Got in y'all's way. But right now it's at 10.7. And I'm going to shift the frequency down. If you see the meter as I freaking go down, the meter now goes to the left of zero. As I bring it back up to 10.7, it goes to zero. And bring it up, it goes past zero. That is what it's supposed to do. So Interesting. I'm going to disconnect that. Turn it off a minute. I'm going to hook this wire back up and let's redo this. Let's let's see if we can listen back to the radio again. Pardon me for getting in your way. tough to get to. Really? There we go. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. You get old like me, you start sneezing just because there's no other thing to do. Trying to put this lead back in here. We know that that 19 kilohertz section works. I really didn't want to mess with it unless I absolutely had to because I don't have I don't have a uh, I don't have the test equipment to do that here. I have it at my office. And I honestly I would love to have that here. I think that's in there. Okay, let's uh, give it a try. Maybe I hooked it up right. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. It'd be getting better. All right, let's turn you around a little bit there. See, I'm already detecting 19 kilohertz.
the right strike, but I ain't careful. It's picking up 19 kilohertz, as you can see right there. That is your pilot. 19 kilohertz pilot right there. Be honest, it actually work. I turn off the 19 kilohertz. No wonder we're getting. Copyright strike. Thing needs an alignment bad. Decoding audio, a lot better than it was. But really, to do this without really to do this without uh, getting busted by YouTube, it ain't right. We have adjustable pants, pillows, blankets, and brand name mattresses for companies like Southern, Thunderbox, and the ABC, and the Southland is located at 2200 North 7th Street in Western Road, open Monday through Friday 9 to 6, Saturday 9 to 5, and Sunday 1 to 4. We also offer delivery and service. Our phone number is 366. American Mattress Outlet. Now you still got big problems. Hi, I'm Jennifer, the nurse at Dr. Samuel Roy's office. 
We love supporting 88.7 to cross because of its outreach and support for others. Dr. Roy specializes in high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, and CPD. Dr. Roy There's something not right in this thing. thing. A wide bit of pressure on the tuner and it just goes nuts. And God bless you. I'm going to stop this and I'm going to play with it a little bit longer. It ain't no point boring y'all with this mess. If I have anything worthwhile, I'll report. Hey everybody, you two land. Um, okay. Fooling with this uh, Delmonico receiver. Uh, as I was editing this video, I noticed a lot of discrepancies. Of course, you know, when you have a schematic that's printed on a small label on the bottom of the cabinet, hard to see, and um, just kind of basically rusty with this stuff. Uh, I did see a lot of things that I have issue with as far as some of the stuff that I did and looked at. But however, uh, some conclusions to draw from this uh, video in this radio. Uh, this radio has clearly been tinkered with. Um, somebody has been in this radio. Just when we originally, the original first part of this uh, part one where I opened it up, could tell by the screws that was in the back that this thing had been open. Somebody had had, somebody had messed with it. And from what I can tell, uh, somebody has tweaked all the transformers and all the coils in it. Um, really out of alignment. Um, you know, washing the radio, I don't think made it do that. It could have been some moisture in the transformers, maybe that might have caused it to go off, but I doubt it as far off as this thing was. Um, also the tuner where I put the rubber grommets in, uh, the spring that was getting, that was getting lodged on the uh, tuning wheel, uh, I figured out that I didn't have enough space. I didn't have enough space between the tuner deck and the chassis. It needed to go be higher up, if you will. And so I have a solution for that. I found at work, I found some small standoffs, uh, hollow standoffs that I'm going to cut and fit in here. But I'm also going to add another set of grommets. But I'm going to put the standoffs in there to give the inside of those grommets a little bit more rigidity so I can center that, you know, center that tuner uh, into that chassis a little bit more. So I'll be able to get that alignment a little bit better. I'll also be able to get the tuner up higher off the main chassis to where the spring will have enough clearance to not hit that uh, screw. Um, and uh, also I'm thinking about adding a turn of, I think it needs one more turn around the tuning shaft where the uh, dial string goes through. So I'm going to take care of that. Also, um, what I have uh, is my secret weapon. In other words, when I get all this tuner and redo the mounts and all this kind of stuff, and I'm going to go back in and just double check some stuff. Well, I ain't going to put all this on camera because one day I'll learn how to make a short, quick video. But anyway, I have my secret weapon and that I brought from work. And I'm thinking about asking my boss if I can purchase it from him because I don't really... I, I bought it a few years back and I don't need it for what I do. I actually need the opposite of this device. But anyway, let's walk over to the inch and I'll show you what I hope to make my new addition. Hang on. And, ladies and gentlemen, the secret weapon. This is a Syncor SG80. SG80. Look at that. AM stereo, FM stereo, stereo analyzer. This thing is sweet. Look what else it'll do. AM stereo CQAM format. Uh, this thing will generate FM IF multiplex signal. The FM side it'll generate RF IF multiplex and sweep. And then on the AM side it'll generate RF and IF. It'll do subcarrier uh, it'll do extended range FM, 
and over here it'll do AM and FM multiplex mode which means no pilot I can do monaural and then stereo and all right I can do left plus right left minus right right only left only and so in other words with no pilot I can do mono with pilot I can do stereo and do all these separation tests okay coming back over here the RF and output level uh, you can change, go from uh, 0 dB to 100 dBi in steps uh, then you got your uh, vernier RFIF multiplex in other words the signal outputs so of signal level there you can vary it then this is the RFIF tuning you would turn this knob back and forth and it will change this up here and then your pilot modulation you leave it on hundred percent which I think is seven or eight percent I may be wrong maybe about ten percent uh, but anyway uh, AM modulation you have minimum maximum and then your audio frequencies which is uh, all 400 one, 400 Hertz 1000 5000 Hertz 400 Hertz square wave 1 kilohertz square wave 5 kilohertz square wave from then external then you can have a pre-emphasis set in and then down here this is where your RF and IF multiplex output goes uh, this was hooked to the uh, receiver and test uh, you, then you've got your F this is why I had the uh, this device here with me right now uh, and I'll explain to you in a second why but the FM IF sweep and marker signals great so what I have is a vertical and horizontal to the scope which is hooked into my Textronics 2246 scopes and I have the scope set up in XY mode and then this right here is the FM detector. So you would take your FM detector, which would uh, this would go to your uh, to your discriminator, output your discriminator, and then what's important is this marker height. What this marker allows you to do in the uh, it gives you 10.7 uh, for your FM sweep marker. Okay, when you're in FM mode, it gives you 10.7, and you can vary. Uh, and what that allow you to do is you can tell you where your 10.7 is so you could make so you can figure out where in the hell you are in the frequency spectrum make sure that you're centered without that it makes it really hard to do and I'll demonstrate that once we get this thing up and going and then uh, let's see what else and then you got audio drive you can use uh, this is an isolated ground uh, you can uh, da -da 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 -da. I believe this is an output it may be an input I don't know but then here's your nope I'm sorry this is audio this is an audio output this feeds out so and you can vary the signal between uh, uh, plus voltage to zero to I don't even know what the hell that is uh, anyway it must be zero dB anyway uh, then you got your left and right audio in, in case you want to do your external uh, uh, FM generator Anyway, that's what I have for this guy, um, and I will be applying it to this radio right here. Now, with that being said, back over here in this box, this generator, when you buy it brand new, which you can't do that anymore, comes with a probe for use in the FM detector and it's a 39G222 detector probe looks sort of like this it has three leads not to count the BNC which connects to there you have a ground detector and isolated direct in the next video I'll uh, demonstrate we'll see if we can get this thing tuned and get this sweep a lot better and I'm just telling you what's going on with this radio uh, it's time we button it up and uh, I'm gonna clear up some issues that I have with it uh, one again was the where's my Chinese stick my Chinese pointer this needs to be separated where is it on there there it is Hard is the stupid little viewfinder makes everything different. This needs to be separated by at least another eighth inch to give that clearance. That's what's wrong there. And then I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna double the grommets on there and put the uh, little. Uh, matter of fact, let me show you what I have. Uh, 
I have these little dudes right here that's going to go into the grommets and that will give me the mechanical rigidity to hold those grommets lined up so anyway we're going to, I'm going to fix this tuner get it a little bit more uh, that ain't tuner dummy I'm going to jack this thing up we're going to align it a little bit more straighter and then I'm going to go in here and find out why this volume control does not turn all the way down uh, notice that um, I'm going to go in here and do some little bit of cleanup and a little bit of detective work. It's something that bugs me about some of this on here. And, uh, and then we're going to try to do another alignment. What I'm probably going to do is learn how to do this alignment without you guys being recording this stuff so I won't be distracted. So I can make sure I got my crap together and try to make a little bit more coherent video. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get that going for you and hopefully we can get a good alignment out of this thing I think this thing's going to work great once we get the alignment done uh, I think it's going to work it sounds really good now real technicians have fluke coffee cups anyway we're going to try to do that and get that and, and, uh, and you know I had the AM working really good um until this last video here that we're, you'll be seeing uh, a long, sometime along the line there I accidentally bumped one of the AM alignments yep so I gotta go back and redo my AM alignment now anyway uh, I got some things to take care of on that and uh, I'm gonna clean some of that up do a little investigating on the uh, volume controls find out why they don't go all the way to zero I have a suspicion I know why it probably means I'm going to, have to take the volume controls out and give them a good cleaning uh, and hopefully that'll take care of it so got some little issues to take care of that we won't I won't bore you with I don't know this is boring y'all to tears already and then we're going to I'm gonna hook up my SG80 in here and try to get a good sweep alignment on there and uh, see if we can figure out how to make this work look at our s curve which is the output of the discriminator center the s curve get it uh where it's symmetrical and uh we can get that done i bet this thing will play like a spotted dog and then once we get that done then uh i'll probably finish it up as far as the technical part of it i'm not going to do the cabinet now because i'm not prepared for that that's a little more advanced than i know how and that's where i'm at on my atwater kent uh cabinet needs to be redone it's just running out of time to do these major projects anyway i'm done for now uh there'll be another video along once i do the uh, alignments and uh finish up on that so anyway just want uh, <laughs> anyway thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll have another video out here soon depending on what's going on it's been a real hectic week uh, some things going on in life so I wish you guys peace and God loves you and we'll talk to you later